Hey, welcome to Sachs Tuition on YouTube. My name's Jeremy. Today, we're gonna to be looking at five common mistakes that beginners make while learning the saxophone and how to fix them. Now, I've purposely picked mistakes that I think are quite easy to fix. So just being aware of the problem should be enough to fix them. Now, since you're here, I'll just mention that if you're looking to learn the saxophone from scratch, check out the Sax Tuition Beginner Series. If you head over to saxtuition.com, you'll see more information about it there, or you can check out lesson one right here on YouTube. I'll leave a link in the description below. So let's get started. Now, one of the most common mistakes that beginners make, even before they pick up the saxophone to play it, is setting up the reed incorrectly on the mouthpiece. Now, you might think, you know, if it's just a millimeter or two out, what difference can it really make? Actually, that makes a huge difference. Just remember that as a woodwind instrument, all of our sound comes from that reed. Of course, we have a big part to play as well, but ultimately that reed vibrating and buzzing is what creates the sound. And if it's not sealed properly on the end of the mouthpiece, then you'll notice you have big troubles with just getting a sound out. Now, aligning the reed correctly can be a pretty delicate procedure, but as you get more experience, it just gets easier and easier. So what I like to do is to put the reed on the mouthpiece without the ligature and just roughly align it with the end of the mouthpiece, then just carefully place the ligature over the reed and mouthpiece. And then when it's on there, before we tighten the screws, we can just use our thumbs to just delicately wiggle the reed in place. Then once we've got it looking good, we can then go and tighten the screws so that they're finger tight. Now, if you spend a few minutes just getting that right before you put the rest of your saxophone together, I guarantee you, you'll create a much richer sound. So the second most common mistake I see beginners make is not adjusting the neck strap properly. So what often happens is the students put the neck strap around their neck, they connect up their saxophone and that's it. They don't actually adjust it. So one of two things has to happen. You either have to pick the saxophone up with your arms and hold it up to play, or what I see most commonly is actually bending down to the saxophone to play it with the neck. Okay, it's very hard to get a good sound out. So all we need to do for this one is just to pull the buckle of the neck strap so that the mouthpiece comes in at mouth height. Very easy, right? It takes the weight off our arms and our hands. And what it means is we get the angle of attack right into our mouth from the mouthpiece. Right, much better. Now, number three out of our list of common mistakes is puffing your cheeks out when you're playing. So if you grew up watching cartoons like I did, you would have seen musicians, saxophone players, trumpet players, etc they tend to puff out their cheeks in that comical way. Now, I think subconsciously, we kind of download that into our brain and we think that that's how it, we're supposed to play the saxophone. You might also have seen pictures of the great jazz trumpet player Dizzy Gillespie play. He actually did puff out his cheeks like a blowfish when he played, okay? But remember, the trumpet is not the same instrument as the saxophone. When we play the saxophone, we don't wanna do that. We wanna avoid that if we can. Now, the reason why is because we wanna create a jet of air, right? With our embouchure, with our cheeks, with our posture, blowing into the saxophone so we get a really clean, crisp sound. Now, it's really hard to do that if we puff out our cheeks because the air comes up in that jet and then what happens is the air just swims around, we lose air pressure and the sound just kind of drops off. You get the idea. Now the fourth most common mistake that students make is leaning on these keys, right? Now the saxophone being a very ergonomic instrument has these side keys down here intended to be played with the inside of our index finger. And on the left hand, we've got these palm keys here, which is intended to be played with the left hand palm and the inside of the fingers. Now these keys, they do stick out a little bit and they're easy to lean on if we're not careful. <laughs> Right? 
right? So if you're playing a tune and you're thinking, hmm, I'm pretty sure I've got the fingerings right, but I'm hearing some really strange notes, double check that you're not leaning on the keys. Now, once again, playing in front of the mirror can be really beneficial for this. So the final mistake that players make out of this little list I've put together is breathing after every note and not tonguing. Now, I've kind of combined these two points into one because they really lead on from each other. So if I was gonna play the tune Hot Cross Buns, I'd go like this. Okay, you get the idea, right? I use my tongue to separate the notes. I take a nice deep breath of air at the start and we get that nice, smooth, connected sound. What I hear a lot of beginners do is something like this. Right, so the difference is that I'm not using my tongue. I'm going ha, ha, ha. I'm using my air to start and stop the note and even worse, I'm trying to breathe after every single note. First of all, it doesn't really sound great, okay? The notes are very chopped up. It doesn't have that smooth feel. And that's because it's hard to get that precision out of just going ha, 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 right? The second thing is that it's really hard to even keep that up. Imagine if we were talking, trying to string a sentence together and you breathe after every single word. I don't think that is, <laughs> I'm not gonna keep doing it, right? It doesn't work very well, we can't keep it up for long. So what we do instead, we take a nice deep breath of air, we imagine like we're playing a long note, and we just keep that air going, and then we use our tongue, ta, 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 to separate each individual note. sounds much better. And of course, as you develop that ability, you'll learn to go even faster. Well, thanks so much for watching everybody. I really appreciate you being part of the channel. Please leave any questions or comments you have below. Check out lesson one of the Sax Jewish Beginner Series. Uh, it's available on YouTube through the description link below. And check out saxtuition.com. If you want to learn from scratch, if you like the style of these lessons, then I think you'll love the entire series. So check it out on the Sax Tuition website. Thanks again, guys. Look forward to seeing you all again soon.